Uh, thank you for attending. Uh, did you guys enjoy the summit? It's almost over. So always pass quickly. <laughs> you know, three days and now one hour and then we have the design. What about Barcelona? Did you like Barcelona? I myself enjoyed the food, you know, the tapas here is great. <laughs> so, okay, we have actually a very good topic today. Uh, just, uh, I am Magdi Salim, I have uh, Muhammad Atani with me and uh, Javier Serrano here. And we're talking today about rally. So, how many of you used rally before? Wow, okay. So, this is like one on one. So, um, be good to keep attending, attending the session and refresh your memory, that's great. Uh, but if you feel bored, I will not be offensive. So, <laughs> all right, so. Here is our great picture about the operator. So how many of us here are cloud operator? Just to know, right? So as uh, our topic today, we have a few areas we're going to focus on. We're going to talk about uh, as a cloud operator, you know, what kind of the challenge we deal with it in day on today and the strategic challenge. We're going to talk about some benchmark tools which is Rally. <laughs> we, <laughs> we look into Rally in deep dive about the design and then we, how we install it and some of use cases, which is very much our agenda for today. So as cloud operator, we have our day-to-day -day challenge to deal with from data security, data accessibility, you know, our downtime, you know, do we have a DR site? Do we able to back up the data? But in a strategic level, we have also some other challenge, like when we establish our private cloud in first place, and as we maintain it after this. And sometimes we like to scale it. And sometimes we actually apply some, you know, patches here and there. So, this type of uh, phases, it brings some worry to us. Like, okay, is my cloud still the same? And, you know, is it still operating the same? And is, do, I, do I have any performance issue? How I can detect this very quickly and how I can verify that my scaling or the batch I just apply didn't break everything else? And you know, as we, as we know, with the scaling, we can hit some problems. So as our problem is a hardware, did we hit some limitation when we order this new nodes? Or, you know, do, do I have all my traffic still going to the same node and my high availability or my load balance is not working? Or maybe the developer, how, how many of us are developer here? I am too, by the way. So, <laughs> so. Did I wrote something in my code that's causing this problem, that I'm creating a bottleneck in certain area, you know? Or maybe the way I decide to choose for my uh, deployment. So we try to figure out a way that we are able to detect our problem very quickly so we can move on and reach to our, our goal. So one of the ways to do this is to actually adapt some benchmark tools. You know, besides Rally though, do you guys use any other benchmark tools? No, no, no not, not a lot of them. So the benchmark tools is a great way to be able to monitor and try to take any performance issue in early stages. So why Rally? Rally is, uh, open source project adapted under uh, OpenStack uh, umbrella. And for uh, Rally, it's, it's a benchmark tool that it keep historical data between different build. Uh, Rally is able to make a deployment called multi-nodes. It's able to verify benchmarking and profiling this deployment. Also, the good thing is, as we see, we have some developer in the room here that Rally is actually targeting developer, QA, 
our QA department using all the time, uh, engineer, and the cloud administrator. Also, with Rally, you can configure it to target any number of OpenStack deployment. So, so far so good? So, how Rally do it? As we know, OpenStack is a huge, complicated ecosystem, <laughs> has multiple components. And how I can have one tool that can target this deployment and still measure it at the scaling level. So Rally has four main components with the database. You have the OpenStack deployment engine. And if you already have your own instance, so you can just configure Rally to target this instance. You have your uh, profiling and benchmark engine. That's where you, the, the engine going to create a user data load and try to load the, the, the cloud. And you have the verification engine where it will run uh, Tempest and it will bring the data back to verify your, uh, your instance. And finally, you have the reporting engine. So that's great. So, so what kind of use cases is good or what kind of use cases that Rally usually we use Rally to, to target. So we target Rally usually to keep, as I said, historical data between different builds. So I can, you know, it can give me insurance that my cloud is running and moving according to the plan. Also, Rally is a great tool to identify right away if I have any, what, what is my limitation for my current build or my current cloud. And knowing this limitation, I can actually use Rally to plan for the growth. And with this, I am going to turn it to my colleague here, Mohammed, so he can actually talk more in detail about Rally. Hey, cool stuff. Amazing how, how much things Rally can do. Scaling the architecture, finding issues with your code, a lot of, a lot of stuff. Thank, thank you, Magdi. So I hope you are excited to learn how to, to install Rally, to install Rally now and, and uh, integrate it with your uh, existing OpenStack. A cloud. Uh, so we will we'll go ahead and, and do that. We're gonna install. We're gonna show you how to install Rally, how to register your an existing OpenStack cloud, how to execute a task and, and do them, some benchmarking with a sample example that Rally provides us. And at the end, we're gonna see how we can generate a, an HTML report. So first step: installing Rally. Uh, basically, you can install Rally by, by downloading the installer, install uh, underscore rally.sh from this, from this location over here, uh, and you, you, you just run it on your, on your bash. And after, after the installation is complete, uh, you do rally manage db create, db create, and this will create your SQLite database under rally database. So, uh, I have a question for you guys. Uh, how many of you have installed Rally? A few hands. Did you, how many of you had some challenges during installing Rally? Well, okay, that's good. good. That's good. <laughs> for, for the guys who didn't install Rally, uh, I'm going to show you my personal experience. So when I installed Rally, I had some challenges. So first, uh, obviously, I had to have uh, the necessary packages. Your system might already have them. You might have uh, some of them, but not the others. So you go ahead and, and, and install the necessary packages. In my second attempt, I was having issues with SSL certification. Um, so my network was not accepting uh, to connect uh, with HTTPS to, to, to Rally. Uh, so I tried that with WGET, didn't work. I tried that with curl, same thing. Uh, in, in a production environment, you would have to check this with your network, uh, your network or your, uh, your system engineers to check uh, how, to, how you can uh, allow this. But if you're just installing it as me, like I was just, I wanted to play with it and know how to, how, how, to, how it works. So you can, uh, you, can, you can have this workaround to bypass SSL. So you can download the script without running it, just download it from, uh, from, uh, from GitHub. And then uh, you, ch you go ahead and uh, into the file and change it, 
change the uh, UR, the Git URL from HTTPS to HTTP, and you will get you will have your installer now locally on your machine. So next, you 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 add the execution rights to the script, and you get you go ahead and install it, and uh, you you are gonna wait, you're gonna download the packages and install it from Rally. In the end, you should see installation of Rally is done. This banner, the green. But wait, is it really done? Oh, as mentioned earlier, we have we have it's not complete yet. We have uh, to to actually create the database. So we do Rally manage DB recreate, so that we have somewhere to save our data. In. Next, uh, now we are going to see how to register our existing cloud with Rally. So first, we create a file, a JSON file. We uh, associate, we, 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 we put in the parameters to connect to our, uh, to our uh, cloud. So we have the URL, the username, the password, the project we, we use for, uh, in, in our OpenStack environment. And the button, you can also hear skip uh, insecure, or if you have uh, your CS certification certificate, you can you can add the pass here in the bottom. Next, we have to to do rally deployment create. We specify this file we just created, and we we give it a name. And you will see in the status uh, the last um, before the last column, the second before the last. Uh, you can see that deploy is finished, but now we still need to check. If it's, it's really complete, because sometimes it, it says it's finished, but it's not really complete. So you do rally deployment check. You'll see the services running. And for extra verif verification, you can do rally show images. It will show you the images you have in your cloud that you just registered. And you can do rally show flavors also. It will show you just uh, what, what you have in your flavors. Okay, so now that we have uh, now that we have connected uh, that we have connection to our to our cloud, we are going to uh, to show you a sample uh, sample task. So when you install Rally, it actually gives you a lot of examples, uh, a lot of scenarios that you can you can use uh, as is, or you can modify and use uh, to test your environment or to, to do the benchmarking. So the, the, the really the most basic one is, uh, for me, is boot and delete uh, Nova instances. Um, so here you can see in the yellow, uh, we have, uh, it will boot the instance and, uh, and then it will delete it, so it will clean it after it finishes. And we are, uh, we are doing it 10 times, uh, which means, uh, you can see here under the runner, the runner times equal times 10. So it will in, uh, initialize 10 Nova instances. It will apply these parameters to them and then it will delete them. We see on the left, I'm using force delete. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not using force delete. And on the right, uh, in addition, I, I do have force delete because I did not set it to, left, to false. And in addition to that, I am actually uh, uh, assigning a network to, assigning a subnet and a network to, to, the, to the instances. So you will see at the end result that the scenario on the right will take a little bit more time than the scenario on the left, because it needs time to create the network and it needs time to, uh, to because it, it doesn't, uh, it does have the force delete as true set up by default. So when I run this task, rally task start, and I specify the JSON file, um, you will see that uh, it, it will have zero errors. So this is a good sign, zero errors for both of the scenarios that you saw on the left and the right. But uh, the average speed, you will see that it is a little bit less in the, in, for the one in the left because it's, it doesn't have to create any network and, and it can force delete. So when you when you finish the the task, it gives you an option to also generate the uh, the HTML report. So with HTML report, you can see the same result that you saw on CLI. In addition to that, 
you also can see graphs. So uh, graphs like uh, at this time, at this time, and this, and details, uh, more details. So to generate the report, uh, you'll do rally task report and the ID of the task. This will also be shown when you finish the, 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 the generation of the task on the command line and you specify where you want the output. And by this, I, want, I will hand it over to our colleague, uh, Javier, who's gonna show you the report. And he is gonna explain more about the parameters that you saw uh, when, when we have the sample. Perfect, thank you, Mohamed. Hello, everyone. So uh, for those of you that haven't seen a rally report before, I'm gonna show you just uh, the report that Mohamed generated. So basically, you might remember that he had two different scenarios within the task that he executed. We have them here, the two of them. Basically, we see the low duration, full duration, number of iterations, and if we had any errors or not. I'm gonna go just to one of them, and I'm gonna take a look at uh, what Rally provides us. Basically, we have low duration. So this is the time that Rally actually takes to execute the task, okay? In this case, 80, 87 seconds. We have the full duration, so this includes the creation of all the resources that Rally is gonna use, so basically, Every time Rally executes a, executes a task, it's gonna create a number of users and tenants to execute the task specifically. So uh, this time includes that time and also the time to remove all the resources that Rally has created, okay? Here we see the number of iterations again, number of failures to zero in this case, more detailed information about the durations, like the average, minimum, maximum, etc. A graph with all the iterations, as you can see we see 10 in here with a specific time, that each one of them uh, took. Then we have the load profile. This is uh, the number of parallel or concurrent operations that are running at the same time. We see that we have more or less two at all times. And then a little pie chart showing us uh, the number of errors and the number of success. We have another tab in the report which is called details. Here we see the same graph, but as you can see, we have two colors. One is for the Nova boot server operation, and then the one that is a little lighter is the Nova, the Nova delete operation, okay? And then at the bottom, I see the same pie chart, but with the two different steps within the task, the boot server and the delete server. We can see that the boot obviously took much more time, 80%, 85% of the, of the time was invested in uh, booting the instances. And then at the end, we just see the input task that we provided. Okay, so with this, let's go back to the presentation. And let's continue with the content. So basically we're gonna go now a little bit deeper into what are the different fields that we can see in, in a task. And then I'm gonna show you also a couple of scenarios uh, of how we can use uh, Rally in real life. So uh, please uh, put on your diving goggles because it's gonna be a deep dive. I'm serious about it. <laughs> okay, so task fields. We have a total of four different fields that we have to fill out every time we specify a task. The first one is the arguments, okay? So these are specific, uh, scenario-specific arguments. So these will vary depending on what type of task we're executing. So for example, if we are doing a boot and delete task, we will have to specify what image I'm gonna use to boot the instance, um, what flavor I'm, I'm gonna use to create that instance, and things like the network that I'm gonna be uh, booting those instances into. If, for example, if I'm doing a cinder uh, operation, we'll have to provide things like the volume type or the size of the volume that I'm creating, okay? Then we have the runner. So um, the runner, we have four different types of runners. We have constant, constant for duration, periodic or serial. So basically in the constant, we're gonna have a constant load um, running for a fixed number of times, and then we have a concurrency parameter that allow us to uh, uh, specify how many of them are gonna be allowed to run in parallel. Then we have constant for duration, it's the same as the, the one before, uh, but only for a specific duration that is controlled by the duration parameter. Then we have periodic, so basically this one executes a, a, a scenario with interval between them that we can specify via another parameter, that is period. And then the serial, which uh, obviously execute uh, different operations serially uh, in a single thread. The next field is context. So basically this is, this is where uh, our rally task is gonna be executed. So here we can specify several things. The main thing is how many tenants and users are gonna be created to execute this task, 
Okay? So who can say, hey, uh, for this specific task, I want Rally to create 20 different tenants and one user in each of those tenants to uh, work in parallel against my cloud to test uh, the performance. By default, Rally creates those users, but I can also specify Rally to use existing users in the cloud if, in the cloud if I want to just uh, stress a specific uh, number of users. One other very important thing that we can do in the contest is to extend or narrow the quota. So when you use Rally, you will see that uh, if you, for example, want to create 100 volumes with Cinder, you're going to run into problems with the quota because a user obviously is not going to have an unlimited quota. So what I can do in this context is extend the quota, put it unlimited, for example, or narrow it if I, if I want to. And the last field within a task is the SLA. So basically, uh, Rally allows us to specify a service level agreement within the task, and Rally automatically is going to check if that SLA is being breached uh, during the execution of the task. Okay? So this allows us to, for example, say, hey, uh, for my user, the acceptable time to create, a, to create an instance or to delete an instance or to create a volume is a, a certain number of seconds. So if, the, uh, if that value is breached, please flag it uh, in the report so I can see if my, my cloud is behaving as I, as I designed it. Okay, so uh, several SLA parameters that I can specify are maximum and minimum failure rate, maximum seconds per iteration, or maximum average duration of the task. Okay, so uh, we're going to take a look, a closer look, and zoom in into a task and uh, see at each of the fields individually. So basically, this is a very simple Cinder volume create operation or task. First, we have the arcs. In this case, we just specify the size, which would be one gigabyte in this case. Then we have the runner. We selected a constant type for the runner. It's going to execute 30 times, as you can see there, and we're going to allow five of them to be concurrent at any point in time. Then we have the context. So as uh, we said before, in this case, we're going to create in, uh, one tenant and 10 users within that tenant. And also, as we were mentioning, we're going to modify the quota, and we're going to say, that the number of volumes in the quota is going to be minus one, which means it's unlimited quota. And then we have the SLA. In this case, we specify two different SLA parameters, the failure rate. So we're going to allow a maximum of 1% uh, failure rate. And then the maximum average duration for a volume creation is going to be 60 seconds. OK, now I want to talk about a little bit about the different projects that uh, are supported by Rally. As you can see, of course, all the core projects are supported, and then mainly, uh, mostly, all the other Big Ten projects are supported. You may see that some of them are not there, so um, uh, only the most uh, mature projects are supported right now in Rally, but uh, it's basically uh, the majority of them. In this slide, obviously, I don't want you to read each one of those little uh, thingies. It's, <laughs> this is just to show you that every single operation that a user can do in OpenStack it's already uh, defined and coded uh, in Rally. So, for example, anything that I use in Cardu, like create a VM, create a volume, create a snapshot, attach a volume to a VM, attach a floating IP to an instance, create a subnet, a router, all those things are already coded, and there is a task available for you to reuse and, and test that, that specific operation from a user's perspective. OK, so let's take a look at uh, two different uh, real-world use cases. So the first one we're going to take a look at is identify the limits of my cloud. We're going to look at an example that is uh, how many concurrent users can I have creating VMs in my system. To do that, we're going to do four things. We're going to first create a task with typical customer operation. In this case, boot and, boot and list an instance. We're going to defi define an SLA for the task uh, to match my user expectations. We're going to defi define a failure rate. And then we're going to execute successive iterations uh, of the task, increasing the number of VMs and the number of users uh, until the SLA is breached. This is the task specifically that we're going to use for our test. It's a boot and list server operation. You see at the top, one thing that is new uh, today is uh, the ability of passing parameters to Rally and make my task as environment independent as possible. So for example, in this case, I'm defining two parameters, the flavor name and the image name. If the user doesn't specify any parameters in the task, when, when launching the task, I'm going to give it a default. So as we can see there, if uh, I don't get any, any flavor name in the task uh, execution, I'm going to just use v3 medium. If I don't get any image name in the, uh, in the task execution, I'm going to just use uh, 034. 
Then we have the arguments. Uh, as this is a boot uh, and list server operation, I have to specify the flavor, the image name, and then there is another parameter called detail true. So this is the type of list operation that, are gonna, that I'm going to execute, that rally is going to execute. This is a detailed uh, list operation. Then we have the runner. So this is a constant runner. I'm gonna, we're going to start with 25 concurrent operations. As we see, we have 20 times uh, iterate, 20, 25 iterations, and 20 of them, 25 of them concurrent. So basically, all those users are going to be pushing, are going to be, are going to be creating instances uh, at the same time. Then we define the SLA. We define three different SLA parameters in here. 60 seconds is the maximum uh, duration, maximum seconds per iteration that we're going to allow. We're going to allow a maximum failure rate of 1% and a maximum average duration of 60 seconds as well. And then the users, uh, as we're creating 25 VMs concurrently, we want to use 25 uh, tenants with one user each. OK, so this is the first run that we did. So as you can see, uh, we executed 25 instances uh, concurrently. The average time to boot that instance was 28.4 seconds. And all the, all the SLAs went, went fine. We see all green. As you can see there, everything passed. No problems here. Our cloud is handling uh, the workload without any problems. The second run is the double. So it's now 50 instances that we are executing concurrently. So the average time, we see that it has increased a little bit by five seconds in average. So we see now a 33 second uh, average time to boot and list an instance. But still, our three SLAs are passed. We have no issues with the, uh, with the numbers that we have provided for SLA. Now we work with 100 instances. So now we see that things are starting to, to get a little bit uglier. So uh, again, we see that the average time increases now by eight seconds in average. And then we have one of our SLAs has already been breached. We, we see that the maximum seconds per iteration is 64 seconds, which breached our, which breached our uh, set value of 60 seconds. We can see. A, just a side note here that this was a home lab environment. Uh, it's not in production. Uh, so production, you should be able to, to go more than this. Yeah, this was just to, to show you guys what yeah. you can do. <laughs> Um, so yeah, again, one of the, of the SLAs failed. And then we're going to go with 200 instances in this case. Obviously, in this case, our uh, average time to boot and list the instance went uh, through the roof, 30, 30, 74 se uh, seconds in average. And then the maximum seconds, maybe you cannot see, but it's 124, so double uh, what we specified. And then uh, the, uh, the maximum average duration also breached uh, the number that we were looking for. So in this case, we could say that 200 instances is the maximum that our cloud could handle. And then the second use case that I want to talk about is the verify, verify your cloud functionality. So every time you deploy a cloud, uh, an OpenStack cloud, or you do an update, you want to make sure that your cloud is still fully functional. So what you can do with Rally is you can create a task that contains many of the typical scenarios that your user would execute. So basically, it can create users, tenants, uh, networks, routers, subnets, etc., instances, uh, and all those things. And Rally will provide you with an output that you can see here on the right, which basically will give you a, a checklist of all the things that have been done and if they have been successful or not. So it gives you really a single pane of, of glass to see how your cloud is, uh, is uh, behaving and if it has all the features that has been designed for. So with this, uh, everything that we have told you, I think it's a, it's a great tool that we, you guys can use. So go ahead and try OpenStack Rally today. Uh, this is some of the documentation that we have used for this, for this presentation. Uh, especially important is the Rally reference, in my opinion, which gives you details about each of the tasks that we, you can execute and all the parameters and fields that have to be specified in there. Uh, and thank you so much for your, for your attendance. Any, any questions? So do you guys actually use Rally like in production to continuously test it? I might have been... Right, so what we do basically is in our development teams, what we do is uh, every time we make changes to our OpenStack code, we execute uh, Rally tests that are standard to verify that everything is, uh, is OK and no bottlenecks have been introduced in the, in the code. And we can uh, make sure that uh, it's scaling and it's, it's designed as uh, we intended for. Those were homegrown, right? We continuously run them. Mm -hmm. But obviously, what we're thinking is, like, 
look, Rally already kind of does this, right? Mm. So obviously, yeah, obviously, uh, Rally introduces load into the cloud. So uh, sometimes it can be something to, we have to be careful when we put load in the cloud and it's in production because we can affect other users using it, of course. Mm. Yeah. One other thing that we use Rally for in, in our environments is that uh, we use them for longevity testing. So we have modified slightly the code. Uh, so by default, Rally, as, as we explained, deletes all the resources that it creates. So what we have done is we have modified the code to remove that deletion uh, operation uh, and all the things that Rally creates stay in the cloud and stay running for uh, a longer time, for longer periods. So we, could, we can check that our cloud can, uh, can, be, uh, can have a, a good longevity. Perfect, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, just before, before you go, guys, uh, we have a raffle here. So the lucky guy is going to win something. I don't know what it is. <laughs> is one winner or two? Just one. Okay. Oh, it's good. I like this number. 303. 303. We have a winner. <laughs> Congrats. Thank you. Well, Thank you. you can keep this. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your good luck. <laughs>